Okay, so now we're going to do a panel line. We're going to convert our uh, the blocks darts, so the side seam and the waist dart. We're going to convert it into a panel line that goes into the armhole. Um, this is one of my favourite um, panel lines. I think I think it's, it's really flattering, um, and you still get that you know fit um, that you can you know like you can adapt the fit a bit you know a bit during the um, like after the garment's been made um, and it has the um, the back panel line going into the armhole as well and I've done this tricky little thing where I've moved the um, shoulder dart from the shoulder into the back neck um, because I just think it always looks a bit funny having a shoulder dart here um, when this panel line is here but um, you know you can decide what to do. You could, it could be like, you know, maybe there could have been another panel line here or something that you could have put it into so it would get rid of that line. Um, but it's probably one of those instances where I would probably work at, you know, like turning the dart, the shoulder dart into ease or something like that. But I thought this was worth a try and it, it'll be interesting to see how, um, how that happens as well, how you do that. Okay, so back to the front. So we've got our block again. So the first thing we have to do is decide where the, the panel line is going to go. And I've actually got some marks here that I prepared earlier. So I'm going to do that. Um, I generally like the, the panel line when it goes into the armhole. I like for it to go high. And I think if I was actually designing something and doing this, I would probably have that panel line going really quite close up to the shoulder. I just think it's, I think it's a nicer line than this one going into the shoulder. Um, but uh, yeah, but still, still, and actually the, 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 you know, higher it goes up and the less curve there is to sew the panels together as well. But for this one, you know, like this seems to be the way that when people put panel lines, they do put them down a little bit lower. Um, I wouldn't suggest, some people too, like they have it going from here and it's really down low, which makes it very hooky through there, which I think just makes the bust look sort of like wide. I don't think that's a very flattering look. I think these vertical lines are, are much more flattering than a, you know, than a line that goes around at a, at a horizontal, ends up sort of being almost horizontal. But, you know, they're all design decisions that you have to make. So we'll start with the center front panel. So down we're going to mark the dart because we'll get rid of this into the panel line. So our neckline and we have to go all the way across the shoulder and all the way down to our, our panel line mark. And then we have to mark in the bus point and it's a straight line from the bus point down to there. Uh, and then we just need to put in our mark where it will marks where our curve is going to be. Um, actually, one thing that I didn't do, um, which I like to, is actually put a um, a balance mark on around that curve as well because you when you're sewing these two together one's a concave and one's a convex curve so they can be a little bit um, a little bit tricky to sew you can get lost along the way so we just Why put that little mark the there bus point too, oh yes yes yeah. so there, yeah there'd be one at the bus point there. too yeah yep um, so there's our center front panel and in this instance this would be um, center front on the fold. So mark that in so you don't add a seam allowance to it. And then for our side panel, I wonder if I can fit it in there. I think I can. Yep. So for our side panel, um, We'll draw when we need. We're going to want to get rid of this dart because there's no dart um, in our side panel. So we need to draw around up to the panel line, mark in your front armhole notch, and then. So we're going to go down here. 
So I just put two little points just beside each other so that I know that that's the point on the curve where the um, where the uh, balance notch is. And now I've marked it down to bus point. So from this point, so that's what I've done so far. So the side seam, a little bit of the armhole, and I've marked in, I don't know if you can see the, can you see those holes there, yeah, Libby? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I've marked that down to the bus point. And now I want to pivot from the bus point and I'm going to pivot my side seam dart closed. So I just swing that around and then from here down to this side. So the center front panel used this side of the dart. The side front panel is going to use this side of the dart. And so we take that away. So now we just need to, there'll be a little, there's a little wiggle on the side seam. So we straighten the side seam up. We're going to draw up to our bus point here. And then we're going to draw in. And you'll see here, there's a bit of an angle right at the bus point here. So we're just going to curve that off as well. And so that might be, um, this is about point, f uh, what's that, point 0.5, yes, point 0.5. So we might take about a centimetre off that bus point. Although the one that I did previously, I did do it a little bit less. So it was probably about six millimetres full scale, whereas this is about a centimetre full scale. But um, just see how you go, see what you need, what looks good. You know, like don't flatten it out too much because remember the flatter you make it, the more um, bust, uh, bust ease you lose around, like across our bust here. So don't, you know, don't make it, <laughs> don't take two centimetres off it or something. Just give it a nice smooth curve over the bust because you know, like as we said before, there's no corners into the body, there's no angles, so you need to smooth that off. And then we just need to transfer your balance notch from the bust across, and then this is our um, other balance notch there to the armhole. So actually one thing that I didn't do before, let's put this back on here, I forgot to transfer my straight grain. Straight grain or grain line, so you can just see it there. So I'll just put it over a bit more. And again, I've kept, sometimes when I've done this, I've actually made, sort of I've gone between the two points. So my grain line has been a bit more this way, but by doing, by having it here, it means that this grain line and this grain line are the same. So they should be pretty easy to sew together. And there, and those, you know, that that top of the of the panel line there, you know, that visually that's more important there than this one down here anyway. Is so, so I've kept these grain lines the same here. So some fabrics, if you had different grain lines, there, it would cause drag lines and all kinds of problems. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even on this, you can see sort of like a slight bit of puffiness there, mm. but this fabric is very stiff. Mm. Like even though it's a cotton drill, it's got a lot of size in it, so it's really stiff. So yeah. it, it is tending to be a little bit puffy. Um, but yes, that's a good point, Libby, by keeping these the same grain in different fabrications, you should get a, you know, a nicer line over the top of the bus there. Um, so these are my two pattern pieces. So just adding on the seam allowances there, you can see there, and then transferring your notches. Once you've added the seam allowances, transferring the notches onto the raw edge there, and the same here. And you can see previously, I did this one a little bit smaller than this amount there, but I've still got the um, notches in the same positions halfway along. Okay, so there are our front panels, and now, We'll do our back panels, uh, just so that the panel, so the panel lines are in the same spot. Okay. Oh, use, okay. You've used the front to just get the shape for the panel. No, this, this is the one that I prepared earlier. Oh, okay. So this is, is, this is the actual pattern that I used yeah. um, to create uh, this back here. 
Yeah. And what I've realized too, what I've done with this, when I've, I've uh, drawn in my, um, I've drawn in my panel line, so I've copied the panel line and I found that you'll see when I join this together that the panel line actually comes over to here. Mm. It doesn't line up with this one. So what I decided previously is that I just wanted to move this dart over slightly. And it's really just a visual thing because the thing is, you know, if I didn't have this center back seam in here, this, um, you know, because these panels here are quite narrow, but if I didn't have that seam in there, you know, the, the center back panel would be, would be that big, which is slightly um, more flattering than if, you know, if this was wider on the body because you'd have a wider line to look at. Um, and I think even though, you know, even this here, when you look at that, because you're looking at this panel here from, from the back, you know, this panel does seem to appear smaller anyway. So by making, um, you know, this back panel a little bit, um, a little bit narrower, you know, it's sort of evening them up visually. So all I have to do here to move this over is literally, because this is like, uh, what's that, six millimeters half scale, 1.2 centimeters full scale. So I'm just going to draw that. So I'm moving the dart and because it's, I'm literally moving it, you know, like 12 millimeters, you know, like that much full scale. So it's not very, not very dramatic. But otherwise, you know, if you do want to, if you don't want to go to the trouble of moving that, which I don't think is much trouble anyway, um, you know, you can have this line so that it does come down and connect with your original dart placement. But um, that just goes to show that, you know, you can move darts simply um, for, for small distances without really changing the shape too dramatically on the body. So I'm just going to do the side panel first here. Oops. And I'm going to take that down to our new uh, dart arm here. Mark my back armhole notches here. And I'm just going to join those lines up. So there's our side back panel. Um, I forgot yet again <laughs> to transfer my grain line. And where did you put the balance, balance notch? Is that at the oh start yes, here. So a bit just there, yeah. and then there'll be one, one on the dart as well. Yeah. So you know you've got these points, these balance notches, and especially the armhole ones here. Um, you know they're they're really important for when you um, when you're sewing your garment together. So, you know, really use them. It's no, and it's no point either, you know, making, putting the, uh, putting all of these points on your pattern and then not cutting them when you're actually cutting your garment out. So, you know, make sure that you actually use them because, you know, they're really there to help you put your garment together. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, show you how to do the back panel. All right, so remember that the, you know, to outline the bits that you're not moving. So we know that this dart is going to move over here into the neckline. So we can do our little bit of our shoulder down to our panel line here. Um, and then from here, across the sit of the center back. And we're gonna do this all the way up to the um, just to the center back there and then I'm going to put in the panel line here
Okay, so we've got um, we've got all of that set up, and so this is the area that's going to change. So let's just see, just so that it looks the same. So I've gone for a point two centimeters from the center back. It's where I'm going to put my new uh, position here. So I picked a point down here, and so. Um, even though this, this is my pivot point because I, I need to make a pivot point that like I can't pivot from here over to here directly because then you know that would be longer and a bit a bit odd so I'm going to now I've got my pivot point down from there so I'm going to close and open this so I'm going to go all the way up to the shoulder here and even though the dart's only this long, I'm going to pivot all the way down from down here, and I'm going to pivot that dart closed. And then I'm going to draw around. Oh, actually, I need to do this back a bit. So I know I pivoted, so I need to find halfway here, because this will be my new shoulder dart, and I need to just sort of draw a really light construction line down to where I pivoted from. And now I'm going to make the dart the same length. So 4.8, make the dart the same length as my original dart. So by doing this, rather than having a dart that's going to go all the way down to there, because my dart finishes pretty much on the same level as my original dart, it means that I'm not losing any width across the back there, um, but I'm keeping the same amount of uh, darting, you know, over the shoulder. So this, this new dart creates exactly the same shaping over the shoulder blade as my original dart here. Because if you joined that up to the bottom of where the original dart point was, it would have been a really long, weird line coming out, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly right. Whereas this one, you know, like stops here, as you can see on the sample. Yeah. Whereas if you, yeah, if your dart was this long, it would be very strange to have a dart that went down and literally stopped, you know, like half a centimetre, half scale, mm -hmm. you know, like from the panel line. So that would be that would be completely pointless. So I don't know, you know, if you like this idea of where this dart is or not. Probably, you know, what you would do is maybe this would be an instance where you know you would trim trim half of the dart amount, you know, off the side seam here, um, and turn the rest into ease, so you didn't have that dart in the shoulder there at all. But um, well, could you pivot yeah. it into the armhole, and then if you have a sleeve, it just it's just ease for the armhole. Or? Um, it's quite a lot. If you did yeah. if you did pivot this rather than there, if you pivoted it down into here, and then just you know didn't sew it as an actual dart, you would probably in full scale you'd probably be adding maybe a centimetre mm. into the armhole, which you know might might be worth a try. Um, maybe if you want a little shoulder pad in there, that would sort yeah, of use yeah. some of that yeah. space as well. Yeah. But um, give things a go, you know, like try a technique, see whether you like it when you've got the twirl, um, and uh, yeah, see what happens. There's lots of, um, lots of interesting ways of dealing with this shoulder dart in 1960s garments. So if you look at um, commercial patterns from the 60s, they always have them in the back shoulder. So sometimes, um, you know, like they might, and, and, the, and one option too, which I'll show you later, is to actually turn, put, the, put the, sh the shoulder dart into a yoke line. So we've got a panel line running across here and the, the dart disappears into that panel line. So that's an option as well. Okay, so these are our two pattern pieces that are finished when you add seam allowances with the um, notches um, put onto the raw edges there. And you'll see from my um, dart here that I needed to put in a, a drill hole um, half a centimetre back in half scale or a centimetre back from the end of the dart in full scale. 
So just keep that in mind. And again, you know, like decide, well, you'll know design-wise whether this center back is going to be on the, um, on the fold or whether you're going to have a zip down the back or something. So just um, add seam allowance or not, um, depending on the design of the garment. So there are our panel lines into the armholes.